it's Betsy with Happily Ever After, etc. And I'm back with another gardening project. So today, Biddy and me and the other dogs are planting our very first things in the new raised beds. I am going to be tackling the watermelon and cucumber beds. I'm very excited. So these two beds are right in front of the shed. I am going to be building a teepee. I'll show you how to make it. It's very easy. This is not like a forever teepee that will live for your entire life. This is not a big fancy one. This is literally sticks and string. It's just a little bit of a structure to give the vine something to grow on so that I can put more than one um, plant in each spot and uh it should be nice you know i've been growing the watermelon and cucumber on my trellises for the last two years and that worked really well um but i want to try them in the beds this year and since i want more than one plant i thought that the little teepee trellises would be an easy way to just give me a smidge more room while still staying fairly horizontal so we're gonna go ahead and get started by making a teepee for this bed and then we will plant our plants. So we have two cucumber plants and then I seeded um, some sugar baby watermelons and my little, I guess it's a water jug. And peering in the side, it appears that I have three healthy plants. You can see that they are growing out the top here. So we'll have to see how much of this we can unentangle to plant, but I'm very excited to put those in the ground. I have started the watermelon from seed the last two years. The first year, you know, the first year I ordered a plant in the mail. It came, it was beautiful, but it was still a little late in the season, and I only got a few watermelon. Last year, I started them from seed, but I put them in the ground on May 14th, and at the end of the season, I only harvested one watermelon before we had a freeze, even with my frost cloth that just took out the rest of the crop. I had seven or eight watermelon growing that were just all gone. So it is April 16th today when I'm filming this. And instead of planting seeds, I already have three plants that are about half a foot to a foot tall. So we are not only a full month ahead, we are a full month with plants ahead. So. I just want to eat a watermelon that I've grown, okay? Seed to harvest. This is my whole goal this year, this entire raised bed area. If I get no other harvest out of these beds, I'm planning to plant, you know, carrots and potatoes and artichokes and strawberries. If not, none of that works, I just want to eat a watermelon. I know the cucumbers will work, they always do. Let's do the teepee. So, again, this is probably not the best, most professional way, but this is how I do it. So, I started by cutting all four of my sticks, and I found some really pretty ones <laughs> that are fairly straight and more of this white birch kind of look instead of brown. Obviously, that does not matter, but when I was collecting sticks to go in the raised beds. If you want to go back and check that out, we put paper and then big sticks, little sticks, leaf mulch, old potting soil, and then good potting soil or raised bed mix and compost on top. If you want to go back and check out that, I'll leave a link below. But when I was doing that, I kept out these really pretty straight white sticks for my teepees. So, started ambulance is going by. Can you guys hear it? I hope whoever it is that that ambulance is going to help is okay. Um, started by tying off our cord on one stick and then wrapping it around tight for quite a ways and leaving a long tail. I did a short tail on this one and it was quite a bit harder. So we're going long tail on this one. From here, going to position this guy in the corner and you want to make sure that he is touching that corner post so that it has something to rest on. Now, 
take another stick. We're going to go straight across. And when you can, I like to put the ends with the little notches or the bigger end up in the air so that our cord has something to wrap around that won't, it can't slip past. So now go ahead and cross and we're going to go around a couple times. Make sure you're pulling tight as you go, but of course we're gonna do a lot more once we get all four sticks. This is just to secure the first two. From here, go ahead and we're going to add in another stick. Hit that corner, cross it on top. Perfect. inches but maybe my math was off on this last one because the other one's too long so just move back over and you are good to go. Now, if you wanted to make it even sturdier, you could wrap the base with wire and then do string over it. You could use, you know, something stronger than this little twine. Like I said, this is kind of a one season solution for me. And then at the end of the season, I'll decide do I like the TPs? Do I want to use them again next year? I can reinforce them. I can make them better. Or I can be done. These are our solutions. Either way, I think they're a really cute way to just grow some vining crops in front of the shed and give it a little symmetry. So we're going to go ahead. I'll bring y'all in closer. We're going to plant the cucumber and the watermelon. I think we're going to plant cucumber here, watermelon here, and then I have some marigold seeds we are going to direct sow um, on each side. That way we can A, have beautiful marigolds, but B, they're a great companion plant for crops of this nature. They help keep things like aphids away. So. 
I did sew a bunch of these in the milk jugs and they didn't work very well. So we're gonna try direct sewing them and see if we have better luck. Hey y'all, it's Betsy with Happily Ever After Etc. And welcome back to another gardening video. So today I'm going to be seeding the two outside back quarter beds with pretty, pretty cut flowers. So a cut flower can be really anything that you want to cut and bring inside for a bouquet or for indoor flowers. Um, but traditionally, you're looking for things that will produce long stems and lots of flowers. So things like zinnias or cosmos that are cut and come again flowers, meaning you cut them and they produce way more flowers, are traditionally really common for beginner cut flower gardeners, which is perfect because I am as beginner as you get. I don't even have stuff thing down on the floor. I have cardboard still. We'll get to that eventually. Today, we're going to be seeding our flowers. So, I have it planned out. I'm very excited. <laughs> I did start quite a few of these in milk jugs over the, um, I don't want to say over the fall or winter. I started them in January. Um, but unfortunately, since I went on a cruise the first week in March, a lot of those things, we had like unnaturally 85, 90 degree days the week I was gone. Been cool and sunny or sh shady up until then. But of course the week I was gone, everything fried. So we have a few flowers you can see in the milk jugs that have made it and that we will be using. Most of what made it through in the milk jugs, I decided to go ahead and plant out in the landscape and I will link to that below. Um, that way, if we needed to reseed things, it's easier to water things all in one bed. I can just come through, make sure they're moist every single day that the seeds will germinate. So things that made it are in the garden and we are starting from seed. Most cosmos or zinnias are um, between 40 to 60 days from seed to first bloom. They're pretty quick blooming flowers. So while I would like to start with plants and not seeds, it is still the middle of April, which means if I plant these now and they do well, we will have cut flowers by the middle of July, which is still really good. So here's the plan for the bed on this side, which is your left, my right. I have Cosmos, Summer Dreams. These get 36 high. I then have Cosmos, Sensation, Picoty. These get 48 high, so a little bit higher than the first one. So my plan is to seed these on the inside and second inside of both spots. So right here, going to be summer dreams and then the row next to it is going to be the sensation pickle tea and that is because these are the two packets that I have the most of and that by the time I went back to the store to get more seeds after the first set didn't work out that they had the most up so we're going to have two rows of each of those a little shorter on the inside and then a little taller then it will be different on either side so on this side I will have a row of amaranth. Now I do have quite a few of these in milk jugs that are started, but they are still itty bitty babies. They're not big enough to transplant. I'm not sure if that's because they're stunted and the heat got to them and they're just not good, or if it's because they are a 90 day to bloom plant and they just take longer. But I have quite a bit of seed left. So we're gonna go ahead and seed the bed and if I end up with too much, if the ones in the milk jugs live, I can plant those somewhere else. Then on the absolute outside row, I have some zinnias. So these are a coral zinnia. That's literally what it says, coral zinnia. And they are the shortest 30 inches. So salmon, coral zinnia, amaranth. This is the love lies bleeding amaranth. Then sensation frequency cosmos and Summer Dreams Cosmos. That should be really pretty.
on the other side, we are almost the same. Like I said, those first two rows of the inside of the bed will be Cosmos. And then I'm going to have a row of zinnias that are purple prints. So instead of the coral zinnias, these are a tall, they are 48 inches. So they are the tallest um, bright purple flowers, kind of pink looking, a pinkish purple. And then on the outside, my favorite, I have three dahlia tubers. We'll be doing those in a different video because they are still in their little pots, potting on. Um, eventually, I want to have a whole bed of dahlias, but dahlia tubers are way more expensive than seeds. So we started with three. I had a cafe ole last year, but it did not make it. So I know eventually I want to have at least a whole row of the cafe ole. And I'll probably get some more at some point this season, but I don't know when. In the meantime, Cosmos and Zinnias are great filler flowers for price, and they're still beautiful. They will, you know, they will fill out and be really pretty on the outside of my watermelon and cucumber vines. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I have my grow grids and both of these beds. They are not necessary. The other beds don't have them, but I have four of them. So I went ahead and put them in the four beds back here that I'm doing um, seeds and flowers in. That way I can easily plant, I know for zinnias or cosmos, four plants in each square is perfect. So I'll do one in each corner and move on. I'm going to go ahead and start with the seeding because I have quite a bit to do. Of everything, that I seeded in the milk jugs. I put, like I said, I put quite a bit out in the garden. The only one that did not make it in the garden that is going to go in these beds is one purple Prince Xenia. Xenias don't love to be transplanted. I'm not even 100% sure how this guy's gonna do. But we'll put them in. Da, 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 da. I know. Overwhelming. Let's go ahead and get started. I will bring y'all in. Almost all of these seeds need to be planted a quarter inch deep and then kept wet until they germinate. But I, I'm putting all the seed packets up on the screen for you, so I'm sure you know by now. We are going to start, I think, over here, do that whole bed, and then head this way. All right, so first things first, we are going to do our Summer Dreams Cosmos in this row. So I've got my whole packet of seeds. They need to go a quarter inch deep. And I'm going to put two seeds in each hole so that hopefully one of them will germinate. As you can see, I have automatic water all the way around the outside of the bed. I have not run any through the bed yet because I'm trying to decide if I'm going to go ahead and use this half inch tube or if I'm going to go with the smaller quarter inch tubing um, until I decide at least the outside will get watered every day and I will come through and probably hand water until at least the seeds are germinated because it's hot in Alabama. I planted the watermelon and the cucumber yesterday and it is, it is on the struggle bus. It is literally 5.30 at night right now because is the first time that it was not blazing hot to come out here and do this. I'm going to keep going all the way across the bed.
nothing to show, but it is all seeded for seeds at the very least or four spots with two to three seeds in each spot except for on the packs that I had more seeds and then I did five with one in the middle my one purple prince from the milk jug and since I have one two three dahlia tubers I planted a bunch of royal carpet alyssum sweet alyssum this is a purple variety in this spot with our little water uh, knob so we'll see how that's doing I planted two of these out in the landscape and one did great and one died so who knows but you know seeding things isn't that exciting because there's like nothing to show for it but if all goes according to plan our couple minutes of work here this has been what like 30 minutes to an hour will turn into two full beds full of beautiful flowers all season. So cross your fingers. I will be out here watering and as soon as we have germination or plants, I will let y'all know. But in the meantime, I will see y'all in the next video. I have dahlias, clematis left to plant and this bed and this bed right here. So this bed right here is going to be mostly strawberries, carrots, some dill if I can find some. It's been hard to find this year. And I'm thinking maybe onion and garlic. I have carrots, seed, and I have strawberry plants. So for sure those two. And then over here I have potatoes for sure to plant. Um, and I'm trying to decide either onion or artichoke. I have a couple artichoke plants that I planted from seed. Um, that I was going to put in one of these beds, but they get huge. So I'm not sure I want to put it in this bed. If you've ever grown artichoke, comment down below and let me know. Two plants in these back two rows, they'd have the whole row. So essentially one plant in the middle of four squares. That's what it says it needs, a two by two square foot place to root. But I know they have long top roots, so they do better in the ground and that in the ground, they can get up to like five feet wide, so just not sure about this. Either way, see y'all later. If you want to watch the watermelon and cucumber planting video, including building the trellises, click here.